On behalf of the veterans of Bond Wars, Coach 2485, Angeli City, I would like to welcome all of you who have joined us this morning in observance of Veterans Day, a day to honor all who have served our great nation. On behalf of the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, it is my honor to read the U.S. Presidential <laughs> Proclamation on Veterans Day 2019. On November 11, Americans commemorate the service, sacrifice, and immeasurable contribution of our nation's veterans who have proudly worn our country's uniform to defend and preserve our precious liberty. As we celebrate Veterans Day, we pause to recognize the brave men and women who have fearlessly and faithfully worked to defend the United States and our freedom. Their devotion to duty and patriotism deserves the respect and admiration of our grateful nation each and every day. We are forever thankful for the many heroes among us who have bravely fought around the world to protect us all. As Americans, it's our sacred duty to care for and support those who have shown courage and conviction in the selfless service to our country. Safeguarding, safeguarding the health and welfare of our nation veteran has been a top priority for my administration. Last year, I was proud to sign into law the VA Mission Act, the most significant reform to the Department of Veterans Affairs in more than 50 years. This historical legislation allows veterans to seek timely care from trusted providers within their community. In 2018, I also signed the largest funding bill for the VA in their history, securing $8.6 billion for veteran mental health services and $400 million for opium abuse prevention and $270 million for rural veteran health initiatives. Further, I recently signed a presidential memorandum directing the Department of Education to discharge some type of federal student loans owed by totally and permanently disabled veterans. We must also not forget or forsake our veterans in time of distress as they are transitioning to civilian life. That is why I signed an executive order in March addressing veteran suicide a solemn crisis that requires urgent national action. Through these steps, we launch the presidential president's roadmap to empower veterans and end a national tragedy of suicide, which brings together all levels of government and the private sector to improve the quality of life for our veterans, identifying and assisting veterans in need and turns the tide on this tragic crisis. Time after time throughout the history of our republic, veterans have defended our way of life with integrity, dedication, and distinction. In respectful recognition of the contribution our service members have made to advance peace and freedom around the world, the Congress has provided that November 11th, each year, shall be set aside as a legal public holiday to honor our nation's victory. As Commander-in-Chief of our heroic armed forces, I humbly thank our veterans and their families for their willingness to answer the call of duty and for their unwavering love of country. Today, we pledge always to fight for those who have fought for us, our veterans, who represent the best of America. They deserve our prayers, our unending support and our internal gratitude. Now, therefore, I, Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, do hereby proclaim on 11, 11, 2019 as Veterans Day. I will cover, I encourage all Americans to recognize the fortitude and sacrifice of our veterans through public ceremonies and private parts and prayers. I call upon the federal, state, and local officials to display the flag of the United States and to participate in patriotic activity in their community. 
I call on all Americans, including civil and fraternal organizations, place of worship, schools, and communities to support this day with commemorative expressions and programs. In witness thereof, I have set forth by my hand the seventh day of November in the year of our Lord, 2019, in the independence of the United States of America, the 240th, 44, Donald J. Trump. VFW Post 2485, Chaplain Lynn Travis will now give the invocation. All right, Chaplain. O sovereign ruler of the universe, be with us as we come together on this 101st anniversary celebration of Veterans Day. As we pay tribute to those who have served and those who are serving in our nation's armed forces. We are grateful for their dedication and commitment and the countless selfless acts they have performed and the sacrifices of their families so that we might continue to enjoy freedom. We thank you for their service to our nation, and we thank you for their commitment and service to their families, to their communities, and to society in the years since they served. We are mindful of the fact that many veterans sacrificed their very lives on the fields, on the seas, and in the air where the battles of the war were fought. We remember those today with great reverence and thanksgiving. Watch over the veterans of the United States in recognition of their loyal service to our nation. Bless them with wholeness and love. Shelter them, heal their wounds, comfort their hearts, grant them peace. Bless our veterans, these men and women of courage and valor with a deep and abiding understanding of our profound gratitude. <coughs> Protect them and their families from loneliness and want. Grant them lives of joy and bounty. May their dedication and honor be remembered as a blessing from generation to future generation. We ask your blessings on all who gather here today and we are thankful for all who are participating in this service of honor and remembrance. We thank you for our great land, for life, for liberty, and the freedom to pursuit of happiness that constitutes the legacy of our forebears and the ongoing ideals of our republic. We pray also for the leaders of our nation. May they work in unity to find solutions to the difficult task of creating a peaceful world. Amen. Please extend a warm welcome to our distinguished guests who have given their time to be with us today. Beginning on my far left, we have Brigadier General Carlo Bueno and Buena, the Deputy Commander of Air Logistics Command, Philippine Air Force. Sure. Seated next to him is Lieutenant Colonel Edward D. Webbis, U.S. Army, Deputy Chief Just Mag, who is representing the U.S. Embassy and is accompanied by his wife, Mrs. Olivia Webbis. Seated next to them is Kevin Mitchell. He is the Junior Vice Commander of VFW Department of Pacific Airs. Let us also welcome our other distinguished guests, Kevin McAllister, our Deputy Director of the VA Regional Office, Jim Boyd. He's uh, seated in the audience in the back there. He's the director of the Mario Retirement Activities Office here in Angeles. Dick Southern, Region 9 Director, Vietnam Veterans of America. 
Mr. Wayne St. Ange, Commander, District 7, DFW, Department of Pacific Area. Larry Atkins, the ABMC, American Bell Mine and Commission. And at this time, I'm going to call forward Mr. Timothy Pratt of the American Battle Mountains Commission, Superintendent of Clark Veterans Cemetery, who has some opening remarks. Good morning. On behalf of ABMC, I'd like to welcome you to Clark Veterans Cemetery. And on behalf of our staff here at the cemetery, we're uh, privileged to uh, host this event here at the cemetery. Uh, I'd like to take an opportunity to thank Mr. Jim Collins, uh, the commander at VFW at 2485, and the leadership there for uh, their planning and coordination uh, for this event. And uh, to veterans, uh, everybody gave part, part of their life, some gave their life. Um, just a very simple and heart, heartfelt uh, thank you very much. Uh, to the non veterans, Take, uh, take time today to thank the veterans for uh, for your freedom to you enjoy and, and they sacrificed for it. So I'd just like to, to welcome everybody again and thank you for coming and uh, God bless. Thank you, Tim. Recognizing supporting organizations, the defense of freedom is a phrase that reflects the concept that freedom is a valuable and fragile thing, capable of being taken away from free people absent vigilance against both internal and external threats to that freedom. Ronald Reagan, the 40th President of the United States said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in their bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same, but well, one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was like when we were free. We are gathered here today to honor our past and present military veterans who answered the call in defense of freedom. Many of those veterans who honorably serve now rest in eternal peace here at Clark Veterans Cemetery. I want to thank and welcome the many veterans organizations and others that are present today to include members of the American Legion, the Disabled Veterans of America, Vietnam Veterans of America, the Fleet Reserve Association, Garfields Team House Association, the Angeles City Beagles, the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States, the Military Order of the Cooties, the Return Services League of Australia, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Thunder Motorcycle Club, Clark Development Corporation, the local community, family, and friends. Thank you for your service and a warm welcome to all. It is my honor at this time to introduce to you Brigadier General Carlo Bueno and Buena, Deputy Commander, Air Logistics Command, Philippine Air Force, Clark. Air Force Base. Brigadier General Carlos Buena graduated from the Philippine Military Academy in 1988. He completed military pilot training at the Philippine Air Force Flying School in 1990. He has a master's degree in development and security, a master's in national security administration, and over his over 30 years of service, he's had various assignments in various fields. Most notably, squadron commander, the commandant of the Philippine Air Force, officers cadet school, and the OIC of the Military Systems to Defense Acquisition. He is presently the deputy commander here at the Air Logistics Command. Brigadier General Buena is a recipient of more than 50 military awards and commendations. He's married to Gloria L. Buena and is blessed with a daughter and two sons. Brigadier General Buena, please. 
Okay, thank you very much for that very inspiring introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, to all the veterans, foreign wars, morning to the luminaries present. Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. I am deeply honored to join you here today in recognizing and honoring all the veterans, specifically the American soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen who, in one way or other, left the comforts of their homes, their comfort zones, their families and loved ones to different parts of the world, including the Philippines, to fight for the freedom we all enjoy today. Some of us may not have actually witnessed the war, but a lot had been said on how they suffered the harrowing and haunting life of war. We are lucky not to experience the devastation of war, and the least we can do is to keep alive in us the honor they have brought to our respective nations. They put their lives in the line so that we, and that generations to come, may be able to see the break of dawn. This glorious land, its mountains and shores are silent witnesses of the courage and sacrifices of our veterans most especially those who came and were gone before us and are peacefully lying on their, this very ground. These great men and women stood the watch with all due gallantry and selflessness, even if it meant offering their very own lives. Today, we honor them and reaffirm our continuing commitment to support peace for a stronger nation. They bear our country and freedom on their frail shoulders. For many years, America, as well as the Philippines, have been enjoying the freedom that our veterans protected. It pains me to remember the kind of lives our veterans have gone through. But as a Filipino and a military man, seeing where my country is right now makes me very proud. May these sacred stones and the veterans whom we are still with today constantly remind us that we are here today a free country. To all the veterans, all the soldiers, thank you very much as you stood watch and assured that everyone can sleep peacefully at night. On the final note, the most genuine and direct way to show our gratitude for our freedom is to salute our veterans. I'd like to humbly and sincerely say Thank you, dear veterans. I salute to you all. Thank you, General Bueno. Our keynote speaker today, representing the U.S. Embassy in Manila, is Lieutenant Colonel Edward D. Webbis. Lieutenant Webbis hails from St. Louis, Missouri, and earned his Infantry Officer's Commission from the University of Missouri-Columbia. He is a graduate from the Airborne Ranger School and Air Assault School. His awards include two Bronze Star Medals, two Defense Meritorious Service Medals, the Meritorious Service Medal, and Lieutenant Colonel Webbis is presently the Deputy Chief at Just Mag, the Joint U.S. Military Assistance Group. Colonel? Thank you for the introduction. Honored veterans, family members, Brigadier General Buena, and members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the band, you sound great, color guard, you look sharp. Leaders of our veteran organizations and other guests in the audience. Madandang umaga sa inyong lahat at mabuhay. Okay, I said that right. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us today to recognize and commemorate Veterans Day, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, a time to honor the exceptional service and sacrifice of our veterans. 101 years ago, and this same day, at this same time, the world rejoiced at the end of the war to end all wars. 
Yet today, here we stand, remembering the thousands upon thousands more sailors, soldiers, aviators, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen who gave their lives for freedom in subsequent wars. We remember those who defended Bataan, those who fought on Corregidor, and those who liberated Manila. We remember those who fought in Kuwait, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, and most recently, Marawi. On this day and at this time, we honor the service members who lie here in repose, along with those who remain missing. These men and women did not live to be called veterans. However, they are remembered as patriots who took up arms to defend our nations with a splendid forgetfulness, placing duty and country above mere personal concerns. On this day and at this time, we also acknowledge those currently answering our nation's call to serve around the world, offering themselves for the benefit of countless others. You are in our thoughts and prayers. As we honor our veterans, so too do we honor their families, the mothers and fathers, the wives and husbands, the sons and daughters, the sacrifices they have made are no less noble. The foundation of the historic friendship between the people of the United States and the people of the Philippines rests on more than 70 years of sacrifice and service by our respected veterans. From the crags of Corregidor to the streets of Marawi, our service members have struggled together for our shared liberties. Our nations and people have truly been allies for freedom. The United States and the Philippines have produced courageous men and women in uniform who not only defend our freedom and liberty in times of conflict, but also engage in civic projects that strengthen local communities and undertake missions providing humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. They do not just run toward the sound of the guns, they also run to the side of those in need. What our veterans and their families have freely given is beyond our power to fully repay. However, on this day and at this time, we recognize our debt for their sacrifices with respect and profound appreciation. Today we are filled with esteem and gratitude for the veterans of the United States of America, the Republic of the Philippines, and our allies. As a tangible measure of our commitment to those who have served, the United States government established the Veterans Affairs Office in Manila in 1922, the only Veterans Affairs Office outside of the United States. For the past 97 years, this office has remained faithful in its service to our veterans in the Philippines, ensuring the delivery of medical care and benefits in recognition of their contributions in defense of the values both our countries cherish. This office is an enduring symbol of the strong bond of friendship and shared sacrifice forged over time. The Philippines is our oldest treaty ally in Asia, and our strong bond remains unbreakable through the shared sacrifice of those who serve. May we continue to walk this path of freedom together as allies, partners, and friends to protect our citizens and promote peace and prosperity for all. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure to introduce to you VFW Department of Pacific Air's Junior Vice Commander Kevin Mitchell to present the Veterans Day message. Kevin hails from New Haven, Connecticut. He served and retired from the U.S. Air Force in September 2000 after 20 years of service. He was deployed and served during Operation Desert Storm, Desert Shield, and also served in South Korea. He's been a life member of the VFW since 1993 and is area of responsibility includes 26 VFW posts in nine countries throughout the Pacific Rim. Junior Vice Commander Mitchell. Thank you, Comrade Eric, for that introduction. Distinguished speakers, DPA past department commanders, our friends from the MOC, American Legion, Stable American Veterans, VVA, the RFA, Comrades, family, and friends, it is a tremendous honor to speak to you today. First of all, I would like to salute Timothy Pratt and his staff for the remarkable job they do daily 
and keeping the Clark Cemetery wonderful. Fantastic, it's fantastic. Our many thanks to Post 2485 for hosting this event. Today is a special day because it's a day to celebrate. To celebrate the honorable service of our service of our honorable service, I'm sorry, to celebrate the honorable service of our brave men and women who served the United States Armed Forces with distinction, bravery, and integrity. We must also remember our Allied Service members for standing by us during peacetime and conflicts. I would also like to remember World War II veteran Raymond Weeks from Birmingham, Alabama, who is called the father of Veterans Day. Weeks had the normal idea of renaming this holiday to Veterans Day in which Congress passed uh, and went into effect on May the 1st, 1954. And it did not hurt to have the full support from President Eisenhower, who was the former Supreme Allied Commander in Europe. So as we reflect on this day, let us do so in the spirit of a dear comic tells me each time we are together, and that is to be and stay positive. This is our day, veterans, and our families. Let us continue to be positive members in our community so our light will shine for others to see. So as we pause to remember the comrades behind me and those around the world who will always be with us in spirit, let us celebrate the many contributions veterans made yesterday, today, and will continue to do tomorrow. In closing again, it is a tremendous honor to speak to you on this 11th hour, 11th day, and 11th month. Happy Veterans Day, my best, very best wishes to you all. Remember, let us celebrate, be positive, and stay safe. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you, and God bless you. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have the Fleet Reserve Association Branch 367 from San Antonio Zambales to conduct the solemn two-bell ceremony. <coughs> Veterans Day originated as Armistice Day on November 11, 1919, the first anniversary of the end of World War I. Veterans Day pays tribute to all veterans, living or dead, but especially gives thanks to living veterans who served their country honorably during war or peacetime. All nations gathered here have veterans that have served since before this day. The Philippine nation and others have been right beside us all this time. Fleet Reserve Association Branch 367, San Miguel, Philippines, Ask you all to please rise and join us in our remembrance of those that are buried here and all veterans of all armed forces around the world. Attention, hurry, rest, uncover, two, bow your heads. We will now commence the two bell ceremony. The Fleet Reserve Association's two bell ceremony is dramatic testimony to humility, dignity, reverence, and honor. It fulfills the promise of our preamble, our reverence for the memory of our departed shipmates. Unfortunately, there is no written documentation or knowledge that clearly identifies the origin of this beloved ritual except that is unique and ours alone. In researching naval history back to the time of Britain's Lord Nelson, we can find no record of a memorial ceremony using the ship's bell. Our current elder statesman credits several deceased shipmates as being largely responsible for the originating and refinement of the ritual. But it is clear the sounding of two bells is the time or the moment to pause and reflect on our shipmates who are now serving on the staff of the Supreme Commander. <coughs> In days past, two bells marked the end of the routine day aboard ship. It was time for tattoo and soon taps. 
with sound throughout the ship. Certainly this is the most appropriate time to honor our departed shipmates. Those familiar with one of the greatest stories of the sea, the ancient mariner, will remember that he found safe passage in narrow waters by listening to the bell on the marking buoy. That bobbing marking buoy sounds much like the tolling of a bell for a funeral dirge, solemn, reverent, and mournful. Since the beginning of recorded time, the men of the sea have guided and impressed by the sounding of the ship's bell. The toll of the ship's bell. Reminds us of the reverence we owe to our departed shipmates. And to those who guard the honor of our country. Upon the sea, under the sea. In the air and upon foreign soil. Let it be a reminder of the faith they confide in us. Let us who gather here not forget our obligations. And in silence, breathe a prayer for our absent shipmates. Each in his or her own words, and each in his or her own way, bow your heads and let us pray. Offering a silent prayer for our departed shipmates. who are now serving on the staff of the Supreme Commander. This moment of reverence we dedicate to the memory of all those who buried here and around the world. This ends the two bell ceremony. Attention. Cover. Two, please be seated. <coughs> At this time, I ask all the representatives of the organizations who presented a wreath to please proceed forward and stand next to your wreath, please. 